My name is Kristin. Uh, I am going to talk to you about uh, the complexities of designing Wi-Fi for higher education. So basically, I'm just going to tell you about all the bumps that I've hit along the road. Uh, my name is Kristin Krokmo. I am a Norwegian network engineer. Uh, and I work at the biggest university in Norway. And I've been working there since 2012. So it's, it's been a while. Uh, where I work, the Norwegian University of Science and Technology. We have roots going as far back as 1760. Uh, we have 8,000 employees and 40,000 students. And I don't know how to pronounce that number. Because <laughs> it's a lot. Um, and we have close to 4,500 APs split between three campuses in multiple cities. And also, we have branch offices around the globe. So it's a lot. Um, some of the difficulties. We must cover every, every need and every technology. Because uh, the students and the employees don't have the newest of the new. Uh, we even had to troubleshoot a guy who claimed that the Wi-Fi was bad. But it turns out he had a homemade Wi-Fi adapter. <laughs> yeah, that was a, that was a fun one. <laughs> um, we have um, historical and architecturally restricted buildings. So we can't put um, cabling through some of the walls, and we, we're not allowed to mess with the structures. And if you see the, the white and the yellow building, on the, that's a painting from 1830. Uh, the yellow and red one is called Sukrusa. It was a sugar refinery turned brewery. And now it's one of our exam facilities, but it also has a bar in the basement. <laughs> uh, the long house, I don't have the fancy pointer thingy. So the long, uh, narrow red house is called Schnittlergorn. Some of these names I can't translate for you guys, so just. Uh, it's from 1729. And it is currently office buildings. And both of those houses are some of our oldest buildings. And they both predate the founding of America. So just to put it into context. <laughs> um, uh, we have to cover every vertical. So hospitals, labs, uh, auditoriums, gyms, and we even have a C-Lab. I guess most of you don't know what a C-Lab is. That's where we test equipment for our marine biologists. So we can test um, submarine equipment and oil platforms. So it's a giant warehouse with a pool. Uh, we are also tied to a vendor. So even if we want to change out, we can't. So even if a vendor is better than the other one, we're stuck. Um, at least for X amount of years. And then we'll see who gets the best deal. Uh, and then the, the worst part is the budget restrictions. So the university gets a piece of the, they get fundings. And then the IT department gets a tiny piece of that. And then the networking department gets an even smaller piece. And then Wi-Fi gets a tiny sliver. So this is some of the projects that I've been working on. This is the main building on our main campus. It kind of looks like Hogwarts. Uh, it was built in 1910, 
And it is one of the historically protected buildings that we have. Um, this one was very difficult to do because we had to um, we had to test attenuation in each and every room because it's so old that we don't know what the walls are made of. Even though they look the same and they're the same width and they feel the same, they're not. So we had uh, drywall and concrete and brick and chicken mesh. So we, we spend a lot of time walking. And as you can see, it's pretty big. I still can't pronounce the, the number. <laughs> um, but yeah, we went through that building so many times, it's not even funny. Um, and we did the predictive, and we, we sent it off to the project team. And they say, eh, it's a little expensive. Let's just go with the old APs. So we did all that work, and they go back to the old. And now the head, um, head, what, it's not principal. Yes, the dean, thank you. The dean of the university, his office is in that building. He's not very happy right now. <laughs> And then we have this one. This is another one of our exam facilities. That is the old post terminal warehouse. And that one houses 1,450 exam candidates at the same time. So the biggest difficulty with that one was lack of attenuation and a lot of people. <laughs> so this is actually, uh, if you can see the orange rectangle on the screen. That is um, where the photo is from. So it's pretty big. And also another difficulty we got with this one um, was that we had a time crunch. So we had a couple months to actually build all of that. And we had to create a new IDF. And two months after they had the exams in there, we had to tear it all down and build the mezzanine to put the IDF on. So everything had to be unterminated and re-terminated, which is also very funny. Uh, and then we have Elektrobrokene, um, it's another Norwegian word. This is where the uh, electronics department and the cybernetics <laughs> department are located. So it is seven integrated buildings. Uh, and they have highly sensitive labs in there. So one of the requirements there was that they were to be able to unplug the AP to do their testing, because they can't have any um, interference at all um, without it messing up other people. So one AP in every room, but in this one, we kind of had to. And that's where concrete is a good thing. Another Norwegian one, Lysholm. It's 50-50 old and new. Uh, six buildings in one. So old and new means concrete and brick and glass and steel. And the photo is from the vault cellar, which is over 100 years old. And we wanted to put an AP on the floor in one of the rooms, uh, but they wouldn't let us until the roof caved in and they had to remix the cement with the old debris. And then we got to put an AP in the ceiling. <laughs> so, win-win. <laughs> Uh, in, the, in the vault cellars, we have common rooms, uh, sitting area, uh, gyms, music studios, and uh, uh, music study rooms. So they are, some of them are soundproof. 
Uh, they also have a library in there, but that's in the glass and steel wing. And then we have the auditoriums. So with us, every auditorium is different. No one, no two auditoriums are the same. And this is one of the more complex ones. So each study group uh, connects to a TV and uh, the presenter down in front can pull up each and every one of their screens to see if they actually are working or not. <laughs> so with all of the complex um, structures that we have, we had to walk a lot and test a lot. Um, but nobody's better to do that than the employees of the college because we know where people congregate and where they be at. So this is how we made it work. Uh, no location tracking. We might put in BLEs later, but currently that is not a priority, and also because it is expensive. Um, reuse of cabling, where the standard is good enough. Uh, if we rehabilitate a building or we upgrade it, we specifically tell them to put the Wi-Fi in there, in their budget, so we kind of sneak, sneak away. Um, and all design work is done in-house. So we actually had a uh, contractor come out and do all the Wi-Fi design for us, but we still had to tag along because we can't let them run wild. So instead of us just tagging along, we thought it would be cheaper to just get the ECAO certification and do it ourselves. So we actually got the entire sector in Norway hooked up and we, we did that. We still have to do um, the requirement gathering and um, the switch configuration, the AP configuration, the switch upgrades, the patching, all of that. The only thing that we don't do is um, terminate the plugs. And on some cases, we even get the electrician to mount the AP for us. That's not always a good idea either, because I don't know how many times I had to troubleshoot only to find that the AP is plugged into the console port. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and we also uh, applied for project funds. So if we need money to get the Wi-Fi up, we have to get a special grant, and then we bulk refresh. And that's how we made it work. And that's it.